Hello? Is... Is someone... There? Yes. I hear you approaching. You sound... Small. Weak. Or perhaps... Just very light on your feet. Everything echoes in this cave. But after being trapped within it for two hundred years... My hearing is finely tuned. Come, come. Show yourself. I know you're close by. Don't be afraid. The Great Ogre does not devour his visitors, as some folklore suggests. <laughs> ah, there you are. Let's make this brief. I've been through this countless times. I know that you're seeking to free me. In exchange for a magical favor? No need to explain what you're hoping to gain. Or what drove you to make such a dangerous journey into the frozen heights. It's always some variation of the same story. And yet, despite the most desperate attempts, here I remain. None have ever broken the barrier at the mouth of this cave. Don't waste breath, boring me with your reasoning. You can't say anything I haven't heard before. However, travelers are a rare form of entertainment for me. It would be just as much a shame to watch the futility of your efforts as it would be to turn you away. So, formalities first, then. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Kehar. What is yours? It doesn't matter. Hmm. That's not a response I hear very often. Why the secrecy? I don't have the luxury of withholding my identity, considering the infamy of my capture and imprisonment. Could you at least be polite enough to share your name as well? Hmm. There. Was that so hard? Hmm. It's difficult to tell beneath all those layers of furs, but let me guess. Human or dwarf? <laughs> Don't lie to me. No elf would be caught dead in my company. Hmm? Truly? Then show me your ears. Go on, take off that hood. Well, until I see those pretty pointed ears, I'm not going to believe you. No elf has ever shamed themselves by coming here. My, 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 you, you really are an elf. Stars, you're, you're a beauty, aren't you? I haven't seen anything so lovely since I was entombed in this cave. Most folk who believe the legend and manage to find my prison are... Uh, rugged, let's say. Desperate humans, gnomes, hey, even a troll or two. But in all this time, never an elf. Taking up with an ogre in any way is such a transgression to the elven people, and with their own magical skill, what need could you have of mine? <clears throat> hey! Steady there! You dare to grasp at my collar like some entitled... What? Come with you immediately. Now, now, you're going about this all wrong, Elfling. Most people start by being astonished that the legends are true, 
Then they might pour out their tragic stories before begging for my help, at which time I must inform them that I cannot simply walk out of this cave as they did to get inside. They must be able to break the magical barrier that was placed when... Oh, those fragments in your hand, are, are, are they? The crystals that formed the barrier. You were able to dismantle them. Of course, I'm a fool. Who else but the elves would have the ability to disrupt such complicated magical workings? My judges didn't think any elf would have any desire to help an ogre. I can't believe this. You've done it. I've seen dozens of beings tear themselves apart one way or another trying to break those crystals. At best, they stumble away in tears and despair. At worst, they forfeit their lives. But you, my lovely elfling savior, you've done it. Now I owe you the debt that so many have sought and failed to secure. <sighs> Yes, yes. Tell me all about it, after we've left this infernal cave. I've not stepped foot outside its walls in two centuries. I'm starved for the scent of greenery. Let us move quickly down the mountain. You may release my collar, Elfling. I'm not your loyal dog now. I am merely in your debt, and once that is paid, I'll take my leave of you immediately. sure why I'm hesitating to step foot outside. It seems a dream, but, but I see that you smashed the frames that held the crystals, so it must be real. Oh, thank the stars. Freedom is within my grasp. So sweet, however bitterly cold it may be. I've heard it passing above the tunnels, howling across the gaping holes in the chamber roofs. The sky, I've stared at it through those openings for so long, and now there is nothing to obstruct the view. It could be a nicer one. Were the gray clouds not too thick and swollen with the snow? Ah, but it is lovely all the same. Come, Elfling. We've quite the journey to the roots of the mountain, but if we hasten, we can. All right, all right, wait for me. You move faster than I expected. I know you're an elf, but I see the worn state of your clothing and gear. This trek is no small undertaking, even for one of your kind. Don't you need to rest for a moment? No time. If that's the case, go ahead and tell me. What favor may I grant you? Obviously, it's time-sensitive. Your father is dying. Why would your own people not heal him with their own magic? How severe an illness is this, that their efforts have come to naught? I see. Then, I hope that I may be successful. I am somewhat intimidated, being a last resort after elven magic has failed. I thought it was nearly impossible for elves to catch a sickness anyway. It is a curse of some kind? I see. That makes me feel better. I can break curses easier than I can heal something so severe. Elflin? Hey! G get up! Uh, oh, oh, no, no, no! You fool! I knew you needed to rest! You're freezing cold, and it will still be hours before we're down the mountain. Uh, all right, listen. You're about to pass out and never wake up, unless I get you somewhere warm. 
I can only save you if I use a spell to transport us down the mountain. Hello? Hello? Damn, too late to answer? Well, your father will just have to forgive you. Wake up. Wake up, Elfling. Yes. Yes. We're in another cave. Thank you for making that necessary for us. The difference is, we're now at the bottom of the mountain. The visit isn't as strong down here, and there's more shelter from the wind. Yes, I took off your clothes. Don't look so scandalized. I saved your life here. I had to wrap you in that bedroll and lay you beside the fire or you would have died. Unfortunately, that means my debt to you has been paid. I'm sorry about your father, but if I hadn't acted quickly, then you'd both be dead, so... Hey now, no need for insulting language. Did you want me to leave you up there to die? There was nothing else I could do in that situation. <sighs> no. I won't come with you anyway. I've paid my debt. I owe you nothing. Yes, it certainly did count as a magical favor. I had to transport us. Do you know how much energy that takes? Especially when I'm a bit out of practice. I don't make the rules, Elfling. You'd have to do something else for me before I could help you again. I'm bound by more than this physical world. Our kind have an ancient set of rules inscribed on our souls, and we cannot break them without dire consequences. Bending them is another matter, but even that is a dangerous path to tread. Everything must be kept in balance, and that means no favor can be given without a return. Please just stop. You're making a fool of yourself, begging like that. What could you possibly offer me? Anything is a dangerous answer, little elfling. You were already bringing shame on yourself by taking up with an ogre, but this is on another level. Can you disregard your prejudices so easily? For the sake of your father? Hmm. Intriguing. I have never spent any significant amount of time with an elf before. I made the usual assumptions that were never proven wrong, that all elves despised ogres. This journey may be more interesting than I thought. Hmm. Very well. I am not made of stone. I shall accompany you. I'm still deciding on what you may do for me, in return for saving your life. Until you pay me back, you are subject to my whims. Hopefully, I'll think of a few things before we reach your father's bedside. Yes, I said a few things. Need I remind you that if I heal your father, you'll be indebted to me again. It's rare to see anyone tally up such a list of favors from an ogre so quickly. What shall I ask of you? Spells? Potions? Or something more personal? Your hand in marriage, perhaps? A union between elves and ogres is sure to cause a ruckus and I would find that quite entertaining. Maybe I should skip the marriage part altogether and demand you spend the rest of your long elven life bound to me. Always at my side. A loyal pet might be useful, and an elven one even more so. Is your father's life worth that, little elfling? Worth the rest of your own? 
Is that what he would want for you? Hmm. 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 Indeed. You are a very loyal child. Willing to do whatever it takes. It's so very sweet my heart might rot. Just remember that you agree to my terms. Whatever they end up being. <laughs> Go to bed. Have you forgotten with whom you speak, little elfling? Don't think you can boss me around. I have just explained that the entire outcome of your future is in my hands. And yet you have the gall to change the subject. Has that attitude of yours ever gotten you into trouble before? I doubt you are telling me the truth. But I'll let it go. For now. You are correct, however. We should rest up for tomorrow. What are you doing awake? It's been hours now. D -d Don't worry about me. I'm faring well enough. Shivering. You're a presumptuous one. You are. The fire still burns bright. Th thanks to my spells. All right. No point hiding it when I'm shivering like this. The truth is, I was only kept warm in that cave because it was enchanted. Spell to k k keep me alive. Anything I desired in the way of warmth, food, or other necessities, it would all appear at my will. It was cruel that there was no way to summon music or entertainment of any kind. Well... Apart from books, such odd, restrictive magic. I would have given my set of horns for a pretty companion or two over the de de decades. In short, I have not felt the true elements in such a long time. It cannot be as cold as it feels to me right now, but there it is. I'm freezing. Share your blanket. Don't be ridiculous. What elf would invite an ogre into their bedroll? If you're in earnest, then make room for me. What do you mean, no? <laughs> oh, you are one cunning little elfling. You really expect me to count this as a favor? <laughs> Have you no compassion in your heart? I would like you much less if you did, in this situation. Looking after your own interests, I respect that. <sighs> fine, fine. But I'm hardly indebting myself to you for a mere blanket. Let me wrap myself around you, and I'll... Consider your body heat the down payment instead. That is much more intimate of a favor, and will balance better with the healing of your father. D -d Don't be a prude. That's the bargain. Take it or leave it, Elfling. I thought as much. All right. Come here. Let me get in around you. My. You've got sharp limbs. Don't squirm around so much. Yes, my ears are cold. That's why I'm putting my head against you, simpleton. Ah, your, your back is very warm. If, if you just let me tuck my hands under your arms... Gods, don't giggle straight into my ear. Who knew elves were so ticklish? Or is that just you? C calm down. 
If you behave like a good little f furnace, oh, I'll warm up soon, and you won't be as uncomfortable. <sighs> I can't believe I b became indebted over a little cold. But I must admit, it is enjoyable to feel another skin after being al al alone for, for, for so long. What? My horns? Oh, I'm... All right. You can touch them. If you want. <laughs> you thought they'd be bigger? Sorry to disappoint. Elfling. This is as long as they'll grow. Hmm? You? Like the shade? Well, thank you. I like the deep red of them as well. <sighs> now, hush. Stop talking and just lie still. You'd better not push me off if I fall asleep. You're going to earn this favor with everything you have. That means I will stay as close to you as I wish. Hold you as tightly as I need. And take your warmth as often as I need it. Yes. In fact, you should offer your heat to me whenever I'm cold. Who knows how cold I will become on the length of our journey. I think... It is only 